All right, to the college game and a guy that'll be in the league soon enough. 14 points, a dozen rebounds, and a loss to Oregon. That's the last we saw of James Wiseman in college. Three games. With five games remaining on a 12-game suspension for improper benefits, he's pulled the plug to prepare for the NBA draft. The Memphis freshman continuing a trend of prospects for whom college is apparently an inconvenience. And it's a bummer if you love the sport, I do, or if you're part of this Memphis team who, who thought he was a part of it too. We'll get to what happened in a moment. First to the brief moments he played for the Tigers, and there was a lot of excitement given the fact that people thought maybe this guy is the number one pick. South Carolina State, well, they're just entirely overmatched, so mostly what he did in that game was that. Lots of dunking, five of them. He went for 28 and 11 in an easy win. Three days later, a temporary restraining order when Memphis was sort of thumbing their nose at the NCAA and he played against Illinois Chicago, had 17, 9, and 5 blocks, played just 25 minutes, took just four shots, made all four. Then November 12th, again, got this restraining order and he went out and played against Oregon, got in a bunch of early foul trouble which is why his numbers were a little bit lower. Also, it was the steepest competition he played. Had 14 and 12, and that's a wrap. I'm grateful to be welcoming in the first person I thought of when I heard this news, and that's Gary Parrish, because A, you cover college basketball for CBS Sports. B, you're on ESPN Radio in Memphis, which means if anybody's got some intel on the lay of the land here, it will be you, Gary. So what's your, what's your sense of what happened here? It's obviously a little surprising because the timing doesn't make much sense. I understand when somebody the talent level of James Wiseman chooses in this era of basketball to just skip college altogether. And I could have maybe even understood if when the NCAA announced initially the 12-game suspension, if he would have just said, you know what, I'm going to bounce. I'm not dealing with this. But to serve most of the suspension – and publicly keep claiming that you're preparing to rejoin this team and try to go to a Final Four, win a national championship, and then dip out uh, the week before Christmas is, is strange. Blindsided makes for a hell of a headline, but is it an accurate description of, of how Penny and his teammates feel? I, I don't know if blindsided is right. I, I think they've known for at least a few days that this was under consideration, okay. but... Uh, frustrated uh, would be would be a, a good uh, way to describe them. You know, they worked hard to recruit James Wiseman and to build this team and to get him on campus and were willing to even put their program at risk to fight for James Wiseman, at least initially when he played in those first three games of this season. And for him to now walk away from them when he's just a few weeks away from rejoining the team and the team looks terrific so far. The players and the coaching staff were anxious to get him back on the court and and again, not blindsided, but certainly frustrated that this has ended in this way. And, you know, Gary, I, I roll my eyes a bit at the brotherhood at Duke. Like, you're there for three months. Like, how, how tight are the bonds? But I admired the fact that Zion was willing, was willing to get back out there with his guys. Is it, is it maybe just to bring it back to Wiseman, the kind of deal where he wasn't with these guys long enough to develop the kind of bonds where he would feel some level of guilt and just tapping out on them? I think you can't overstate the role that that probably played in this. I do think he got a little detached from the team, a little detached from his coaching staff, and it, it opened up some room for other people to, to get in his ear. I, I do wonder, and we'll never have a clear answer to this, but if Memphis shuts him down at the beginning of the season, he comes back after nine games, plays against Tennessee, and gets that taste of what big-time college basketball is. Sure. Plays in front of a sold-out arena at Thompson Bowling. Uh, wins a big game on national TV with his teammates. I find it hard to believe that he would then want to dip out the way that he has dipped out. I want people at home to know this. This man landed in Vegas, got off a plane, and said he'd come sit down and talk to me. I'd be eating a steak or playing cards if I were in Vegas right now. Gary, I appreciate you, man. Happy holidays. Until next time, stay well, all right? Hey, this place doesn't close. I still got plenty of time to do all of the things I was going to do. <laughs> I bet you do. Go do it and go do it well, man. <laughs> What's up? Thank you so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. Don't forget to download the ESPN app. And if you want more premium content, which you do, make sure that you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. See you soon.